Hi there folks, Skogon140 back for another response video. This is going to be a response to, again, you guessed it, the five awesome Transformers guys, or as I think they're calling themselves now, the five awesome people who are interested in other things, other nerdy things besides Transformers. Um, this is a response to a week old question that I was originally going to do, but I just didn't get around to doing. This is a response to... Um, to the topic of things like remakes and reissues and rehashes and things like that. I've seen some responses to this question. Some of them have been very good and very insightful, and it's a bit hard to kind of separate which one was the best, but there you go. So I just thought I'd throw my ring into this whole thing just to see if it counts. Um, so yeah, remakes and reissues and rehashing and change and things like that. When it comes to a remake of something, it's a bit hard to kind of really say what my opinions are on remakes, because I will throw my hands up in the air right now and say that when it comes to remakes, I have a huge problem with them for a lot of different reasons. Because over the years, we've had remakes of products such as movies, which is the common trait going at the moment, um, popular music, taking a popular song or re uh, remixing it or adding something new to it. Um, cartoons, taking an old cartoon and bringing it into the new generation to provide a little bit more spiced animation, and just so many different things. That's a bit hard to kind of it's a bit hard to kind of really draw the line between good and bad. And where I come in this whole re uh, remake thing is a very different thing because again, I don't like remakes, but there are some remakes out there that I can deal with. There are some remakes that are good that a lot of people have considered to be the best thing that happened to that product for a very long time. Like, take for example, um, the Christopher Nolan Batman films. I find that those films did a very good job of taking Batman into a much more realistic setting and just remaking the character for a new generation of comic book readers as well as um, mainstream cinema in general and just seeing where that character goes from there and it's done a very good job with it. And I think we can all say that when it comes to a remake of something, especially when it comes to films, the reason you want to make a remake of something is to either tell the story from a different perspective or a different way, or to update it to modern times. And there are some remakes that have been good, like again, the Batman films, and there have been some remakes that have just been ultimately unnecessary that didn't do what the old movie did a while ago. Um, it's a bit hard to kind of go down the list and say why, because there are some remakes that are good and bad, but lots of bad remakes. Um, things like Death at a Funeral, or The Thing. I know that's a prequel, but there you go. Um, a Nightmare on Elm Street, and things like that. Remakes of good movies that just don't need to be remade, because they didn't do what the original movie did very well. And... I find that what the, what the film industry is suffering from at the moment is lack of originality in the original films are very rare to find nowadays because when it comes to Hollywood right now, it's just remake after remake after remake. I know we're getting the Spider-Man remake, I know that we're getting the, um, uh, the new remake of Transformers that's come out in 2014, I'll get onto that in a minute, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so many different remakes that it's so hard to try and find an original idea in Hollywood. So, and plus, you can you can always say that there's no originality in anything anymore because point is to write down Sester, the original product did it better than the new one, and some remakes, like I said, have been good, but some remakes just ultimately are necessary. And I just find that if you want if you want to see an, the original classic, then watch the original classic because if the remake is good. Then, then watch it because one thing that I think remakes don't do very well, like I said before, I've been saying for twice now, they don't do what the original film did. However, some remakes, like for example the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie, I found that movie very entertaining. It was a new, it was a re it was a reboot to the Star Trek franchise that it really deserved, and I know that there's going to be a sequel, and hopefully. There's going to be new TV shows. I'm looking forward to that. So one thing that I think the Star Trek movie did very well was it managed to bring a lot of people back into Star Trek. And what's this Trek? How could you not like Star Trek? But um, 
it, it's, it's kind of really hard to say why, because again, like I said, there are so many remakes out there that are bad and, and unnecessary, and there are very few ones that actually work and that are good. Batman and Star Trek. Um, but I, I have a problem with remakes in general, but, but aside from films, with cartoons, I know that recently we've had things like, th we're having things like Thundercats, which I found, which I'm finding very good. It's a great remake of a cartoon that a lot of people grew up with in the 80s. And I found the stories in the new Thundercats far more well-written and well-grounded in this new installment than what the original cartoon did. And I'm not saying that the original cartoon isn't bad, but the original cartoon just... It's a bit difficult to take seriously. The same thing with things like um, uh, He-Man. The original 80s He-Man. A lot of people have a hard time taking that seriously because a lot of people will associate with He-Man thinking he's a gay character and all that stuff. The new, the, the remake of He-Man that came along in 2002 to 2004, a great remake, provided a lot more story to the character, provided a lot more mythos to the franchise itself. It did a great job of doing that. And it's a shame that it got cancelled halfway when it was just getting good. Um, so... Remaking an 80s cartoon is not a bad thing, providing if you can do something original and you can provide something that will grab a lot of people's attention, but at the same time retain some of its edge and charm, then that's something good. Now onto the subject of re uh, reissues. I, I have no problem with reissues whatsoever. I like reissues a lot because when it comes to reissuing an old product from a year before or several years before, Putting it in the new generation just for new people to see. That's a great thing. I, th I know that, um, oh, what was it? Recently, they released Star Wars Episode 1 in 3D. I'm not a big fan of the prequels, but again, it's a great idea of bringing an old film to the big screen for a new, for a new generation of cinema goers to see. That's actually a great thing to see. And. I, 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 know, I know they did the same thing with Back to the Future, because Back to the Future had a, I think it was a, a while ago, they re they re-released that in cinemas. Re-releasing old movies, I find is far better than remakes, I think. Um, oh, what else? Reissuing toys as well, because around the early 2000s, I know that Hasbro started reissuing a lot of um, uh, G1 toys for older collectors and also new collectors as well. That's a great thing, I find. Reissuing old toys is one of the best things that could happen to a, to, a, to a product. And it does a great job of bringing in more people, because the one thing that people like to see is reissues of the things that they grew up with. Um, and the same thing with DVDs, because with, with the current installation, with the current thing of DVD technology and Blu-ray uh, DVD technology, is taking an old cartoon or an old movie or an old TV show and putting it on DVD, putting it on DVD for older people to watch and new people to watch, a uh, new generation of people to watch. Um, it's a great thing because imagine if you were a parent and you were sitting there with your child and showing your child for the first time um, the original '86 Transformers movie. You'd be able to tell them that's the movie that I grew up with. Now I'm going to pass this movie on to you because you should see this movie and know what that movie did to help make my childhood great. That, that's a great thing! I find reissues a great thing to see, and plus with things like, um, uh, with the Classics Generations line, taking older characters, bringing them into the new era of toys for Transformers, and just reinventing the characters, the toy design, that's a great thing! I, lo I love seeing reissues, that, that actually does me a lot of good to see that happen. Um, Again, old cartoons, DVDs and things like that. More reissues. I love reissues. In fact, the one thing that I want to see from now on, and I'm, this is going on to the remake thing a little bit, because the one thing I just find a lot more interesting than a reissue of a movie, than a remake, is you're showing the older movie to a new generation of cinema goers. Showing that person that movie that they haven't seen before, haven't seen yet. That's a good thing, I think. More films should do that, I think, because... The one thing that I think is kind of stagnant about the, the movie industry at the moment is, with the current remake trend that people are going on at the moment, it's hard to find anything to really get excited about. So one thing I think we should see is more reissues of movies. That's a great thing. Now onto the subject of change. And this is a kind of touchy subject that a lot of people have a problem with. 
most people, and myself included, have a lot of problems with change, because change is a scary thing to deal with. And... With any product, with any franchise, over the years you will have change. It won't stay the same, because if something stayed the same for a very long time, it would just get boring. It would just get so boring and no one would care. No one would give a shit otherwise. And with things like Transformers, we've had new cartoons, we've had the movies, we've had new toy lines. They've done very well, I think. And I, I will say regarding the films, I will admit they're not everybody's cup of tea, and if you don't want to see them, then don't watch them. But with people having a hard time accepting change, it's kind of really hard to really have a discussion with somebody who grew up with the G1 cartoon and who loved the G1 cartoon. The G1 cartoon was their first experience of Transformers and seeing how that would unfold in their lives. Taking a fan of Gen 1 and, and asking them to watch the recent Michael Bay films. He'll, he'll just go ahead and say, oh, Michael Bay raped my childhood again and again. I think I've had that more times than anything, and quite frankly, if I have if I had a pound for every time someone came up to me and said, Michael Bay wrote my childhood to this project that I grew up with, well, I'd be rich, just saying. Because the one thing that I really am so tired of seeing, especially when it comes to change, or people not agreeing with change, people just have a hard time just accepting it, and like Dave said, we have to move on. We have to accept new ideas, new creative ideas to the product that it will do over the years. And with, with change, it's a little bit hard to kind of really touch that subject, because I have one thing that I'm able to admit is, even though I grew up with the um, with the cartoon, with the G1 cartoon in my childhood, when, when it was showing on Fox Kids in the 90s, I do have the distinct pleasure of being able to admit that the original Transformers cartoon is very, very cheesy, which is something that a lot of people can't do. And that's fine. <laughs> the, the same thing with Star Trek, because a lot of people will say that the show is very cheesy, but it's still really good. That's not to say that the show isn't enjoyable. I have the original G1 series. I watch it all the time. Um, but I, I just have... I'm, the, I'm able to admit that the show has its problems, but it's what helped Transformers start it out on its big, big leap forward into the years to come to help bring in new ideas, new prospects to new cartoons and toilets that would then follow afterward. And if it wasn't for change, we wouldn't have things like Beast Wars. If it wasn't for change, we wouldn't have things like the movies, animated and prime. And I, the one thing I'll say about Beast Wars and animated and prime, and Beast Machines as well, sorry, um, what a lot of people need to know, and what a lot of people should know as well, is that those four installments to Transformers have some of the best writing, the best storytelling, and the best character development of any Transformers installment I can think of in recent years, because the movies, again, they're not to everybody's tastes, and I will, I will say right now, the movies will never be what we wanted them to be. The movies will never be up there amongst intelligent, thought-provoking films like The Shawshank Redemption, or Black Swan, or... Forrest Gump, or things like that, because that's not what those films are made to, that's not, what those, that's not what the films are meant to do. The films have explosions and giant fighting robots, that's all they are, and and those films are aimed towards a specific audience. They're either aimed for the casual Transformers fans who will accept the change that is offered to them, and will, who will watch shit blow up, as it were and the older fans who will often like them in some cases, but at the same time will bitch and moan saying you wrote my childhood. Um, change is a good thing, I think. Change can be good. Change is scary, though, I will admit that. Change is a scary thing that we have to deal with in our lives. But it's one thing that I think we have to cope with. And it's the one thing that we really can't escape from. Change is one of those things that will always, always happen. And saying stuff like, this raped my childhood. Your childhood ends when you reach adulthood. Your childhood ends when you suddenly start to become a little bit more older and wiser in your life. Take that old product, show it to your child, and then maybe that will help. 
Maybe, maybe that actually will give you something to to be happy about. But don't just go ahead and say, oh, Michael Bay or this from that my childhood, because it it's the same thing over and over again. And, and this just proves my point as well, that no matter how much you bitch and moan about something, you will never get what you want. The same thing with the movies. If you don't like them, don't watch them. Don't spoil it for those who want to actually watch them and enjoy them for the for, for what they can do. And while I'll admit the films aren't intelligent, they aren't the best pieces of cinema, they are mildly entertaining in some cases, they do have their good points, and people have a hard time accepting them, but just don't, don't, just, don't just go ahead and say this and that rip my childhood, because it just gets boring. Um, but there you go, that's my, that's my whole intake on the thing. And I'll go down this in, a, in one quick rehash. Uh, rehash. Um, remakes, again, re some remakes can be very good, but some remakes can be very bad. And one thing I forgot to mention as well, the, um, the, re uh, the remake of Battlestar Galactica. It's a great show, I highly recommend a lot of people watch it, it's very good. Um, reissuing, great thing. I love to see reissues of old products, because you're inspiring, you're, you're showing the old product to a new generation. And that's good, that's a really good thing to see. Change, again, yes, change is a good thing, in some cases, but ch and change can often be a bad thing. And it's very difficult to escape from it, because change is always looming over the horizon, and you can't escape it. And, but if you, but if you feel betrayed, if you feel unhappy with the change that comes about in a, in a franchise, you can bitch and moan for a very long length of time, and just don't watch the product and be stuck watching whatever it was you grew up with. I know that I kind of do the same thing as well, because a lot of people know that I'm a big anime fan. I watch a lot of anime from the 80s and the 90s, because... Uh, just going on this quickly, I do love a lot of anime from the 80s and the 90s because that's what I was growing up with at the time it was showing on TV. And it was back then what anime did that had a lot of edge and creativity and vitality that a lot of anime now just doesn't seem to have because now it just seems to have constant um, cookie cutter plots, same genres doing the same thing over and over again, not, learn, not improving or anything, same characters being seen. Um, nothing gained from it. But, uh, but but if you want to argue with me about that, go ahead. I, I encourage you to. But, yeah, that, that's my kind of response to that. I hope that was good. Um, and quite frankly, I, th I think you can say this about G1. As good as the G1 cartoon was back then, for, for the time, if you look at it now, when you're in your 20s, when you're in your late 20s or 30s, and you watch it and go, this is what I watched... I will be the. I will be able to admit that the show is silly and cheesy, but it was still what I grew up with. Um, that, that's fine, but you, but you need to able to. You need to admit to yourself that the show does have its problems, and that I'm just gonna say right now, it's not the best written. It's not the best written cartoon ever made. It has its good points. And it was able to do some things interesting, but at the same time, you need to be able to admit that the show, the show has more plots in it, more more holes in it than a sieve when it comes to storytelling. I'll just end it right there.